My weird school. Fast facts. Dogs, cats, and dung beetles. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter Nine. Animals in space. The first living thing to leave the Earth's atmosphere wasn't a person; it was a fruit fly. I guess they wanted to see if bananas and watermelons could survive in outer space, huh? Very funny, Arlo. But it's true. In 1947, the United States sent a bunch of fruit flies into orbit. Since then, all kinds of animals have left the Earth, so scientists could study how they would respond to this different environment. Rats, rabbits, turtles, spiders, jellyfish, and algae. Here are a few others: dogs and cats in space. The first dog in space was Laika, a stray mixed breed the Soviets sent up in Sputnik Two to orbit the Earth in 1957. She was also the first animal to die in space, because the Soviets didn't have any plan for her to return safely. That wasn't very nice. The Soviets actually sent more than a dozen dogs into space. Between 1957 and 1961, some of them survived their flights. One named Schelka had a litter of puppies when she came home, and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev gave one to President Kennedy's daughter Caroline as a present. The first cat in space was Felicet, also known as Astrocat. She was launched by France in 1963 and returned home safely. Chimps in space. To prepare for the first manned space flight, NASA sent up some chimpanzees in 1961. Enos was the first chimp to orbit the Earth. A chimp named Ham worked a series of levers, just as he had been trained to do. Both chips survived their flights and landed safely. Ham retired after his mission and lived at the Washington Zoo until 1980. When he died, his remains were buried at the International Space Hall of Fame in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Bugs in space. Before the space shuttle Columbia was launched in 2003, a high school student named Todd Nelson won a NASA contest when he designed an experiment to study how moths, bees, and flies would react in a weightless environment. Tragically, Columbia broke apart when it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, killing seven astronauts. But amazingly, canisters with a bunch of nematodes inside were recovered from the wreckage, and a lot of the worms were still alive. A jumping spider named Nefertiti lived on the International Space Station in 2012. Instead of spinning a web like most spiders do, she would just pounce on her prey. Since she couldn't jump in space. She adapted by sidling up next to her prey instead. When she got back to Earth, Nefertiti was put in the insect zoo at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History. Bears in space. Okay, I'm not talking about big bears here. I'm talking about water bears. There are tiny. Microscopic animals that are known for being able to survive just without any conditions. Water bears can live for years without drinking. They don't seem to care whether the temperature is broiling or below zero. So in 2007, three thousand water bears were brought on the European Space Agency's Photon M3 mission. Naturally, they survived. Fish in space. 
In 2012, Japan sent a supply ship to the International Space Station. It had an aquarium filled with madaka fish. The Japanese scientists found that instead of swimming in straight lines, the fish in space would swim around in loops. By the way, do you know what part of a fish weighs the most? Huh? And I always thought the first animal in space was the cow that jumped over the moon. Chapter ten: Animals in love. Oh, gross! The L word. I think I'm gonna throw up. Love is an important part of the animal kingdom, Arlo. Animals fall in love with each other all the time. You said it again. Ugh, disgusting. I don't need you around, you know, Arlo. I can just write this chapter about animals in love all by myself. Go ahead. I don't want anything to do with that L word stuff. Goodbye. Is he gone? Oh goody! It's about time. I thought he'd never leave. Now I can talk all I want about love, love, love. I love love. What's not to love? It's so romantic, isn't it? I think Adelie penguins are the most romantic of all the animals. They live in Antarctica and gather together in colonies during the spring to find their true love. When a male penguin finds a female penguin that he likes, do you know what he does? He pushes a stone over to her feet. Isn't that adorable? It's like he's giving her flowers. Then, if the female penguin likes him back, they sing a little song together. And after she lays her eggs, she and her true love take turns sitting on them to keep them safe and warm. I think I'm going to cry. There are lots more animal love stories. The bowerbird lives in Australia and New Guinea. When a male bowerbird wants to attract a mate, he builds a fancy nest out of flowers, feathers, stones, and pieces of plastic and glass. That's true love. The thing is, if he sees another male's fancy nest nearby, he might fly over there and wreck the place. So a female bowerbird will come to his nest instead. That's not very nice. Boys can be so mean. I don't approve of such violent behavior. But I suppose humans also do a lot of weird things when they're in love. Why not animals? The blue-footed booby is a seabird that lives in the Galapagos Islands. When a male likes a female, he will raise up his big blue foot and put it down. Then he'll raise his other big blue foot and put it down. Apparently, that drives the girls crazy. This probably is going to sound like a joke, but it's not. What do you get? When you mate a male tiger and a female lion, a tiger, and when a male lion and female tiger mate, they make a liger. Lots of bird species find a partner and stay together for the rest of their lives. Ospreys, Atlantic puffins, scarlet macaws, and Canada geese. Others get divorced. About one out of four barn owl marriages ends in divorce. If the female doesn't lay enough eggs, or some of their chicks don't survive, the couple will split up, and the male usually keeps the nest. Can I say something about love? What, Arlo? I thought you left. I did. Now I'm back. And you want to say something about love? You, Arlo? Are you feeling okay? Oh yes. May I have the floor? Arlo, if you're going to talk about love, you can have the floor, the ceiling, and the walls. Okay. Do you know how a male hippo attacks a female hippo? By pushing a stone up to her feet? No. 
By taking her out for a fancy dinner? No. By writing her love letters? No. I give up. How does a male hippo attract a female hippo, Arlo? He pees and poops at the same time, and then he twirls his tail around like an airplane propeller and sprays his droppings all over the place. The female hippos are very impressed. That's disgusting, Arlo. We said we weren't going to talk about that stuff. But it's a fact, so you have to live with it. Na 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 boo boo on you. You're impossible, do you know that? Hey, you had your chapter to talk all about the L word. Well, now it's my turn. I get to write a chapter of my own. That's only fair.